one. It's going live in three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? Did you see the countdown happen? Isn't that awkward? It is. What's up, everybody? Andrew Wall here, host and executive producer at Illuvium, and welcome to Illuva Talks. We've got a stacked panel, as always, discussing the most interesting topics in crypto gaming. And it's really important on this show that we lead the conversation about the future of gaming as a leading game studio. And the only way to do that is to bring the smartest people in the entire internet onto the show, including, let's call him the king of German crypto gaming. He commands the <laughs> largest creator, or the largest community as a creator in Germany in crypto gaming. It's this man right here, Sandro. What's up, buddy? Hi, how's it going? Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I welcome don't know to what show. to say. <laughs> <laughs> welcome yeah. to the show. We're going to talk about Germany. You're going. You all are going to learn a lot about German gamers and the German market today. You're going to leave this episode knowing a lot of new things. But the panel is even more stacked than that. Oh yeah, we've got content creator returning on the show. T S G in the house. He's probably going to do his patented arm movements. Let's see him. Hey yo. Yo, by are. the way, guys, Andrew said the smartest people on this. So I've been on here twice, so Andrew has made it clear I am one of the smartest people. I'm just joking. I'm not going to say that. Um, but no, I appreciate you having me back on, guys. <laughs> of course. Of course yeah. he's the smartest. We're bringing him back. Thanks for coming on the show, man. And at the last minute, one of our previous guests got COVID. We hope he feels better. And so Scoriox decided that to wake up at 3 a.m. If you're not familiar with Scoriox already, he is an Alluvium-focused creator that focuses on tokenomics, NFT structures that back GameFi projects. And this man's back up out of bed after only sleeping for a couple hours. Welcome to the show, buddy. <laughs> Glad to be here. Um, I don't know much about German gaming, so I'm eager to learn as much as the audience as well. Perfect. This is going to be a great episode. And let's just go over all of the topics that we're going to cover today because it is going to be amazing. First topic that we're gonna to cover today, my friends, is creators in media. Anyone that's looking to build a media business, let's say, and uh, is looking to uh, maybe make, make a guild, is maybe looking to become a live streamer, is looking to build some kind of business in Web3 and crypto. We're gonna go over the space, the competition, and the opportunities there uh, of building those online communities and taking advantage of the technologies of the future. Next, we'll talk about Germany, the fifth largest gaming market in the entire world with Sandro, the king of Germany. German crypto communities, I guess. I don't know why I'm calling you a king. It doesn't make any sense. And then we're going to speculate and talk about the future of NFTs, their utility, and we will do a live Q&A as well. It's gonna be great to cover all of these fascinating topics today. And it goes without saying, nothing any of these dudes say or I say on this show is financial advice. Maybe watching the show is a part of your research Awesome, I'm really glad you're doing research. Learn, we all love learning. We all love learning about this emerging technology. Do your own research, make your own decisions. We are just guys that like video games and new technologies. And lastly, Bulldogs jerseys are here. If you didn't know about these, these are gonna be some of the, if not the very first actual official sort of merchandise, if you will, with Alluvium branded and on it. We've partnered up with, why would I even say it? When I can play this video instead, check it out. <laughs> Alluvium has secured our first elite sporting partnership with legendary rugby league club, the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. We are proud to bring you official team jersey, this exclusive Alluvium Bulldogs design. Each jersey comes with a cosplay NFT and bonus classic membership to the Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs. Get yours today as 19 of these limited edition jerseys will be worn in game, then signed by the Bulldogs own players. Did you guys buy the jerseys? I'm just curious to know, I'm putting you on the spot. Did you guys buy some of these jerseys? Not yet. Not yet. No, it, not yet. <laughs> should I? <laughs> not into rugby. It's okay. It's all right. It's yeah. kind of weird having a promotion by an American for rugby, but what are you gonna do? So yeah. let's get into media businesses, guilds, influencers, streamers, if any of you out there want to get any attention in this new media space, Web2 is the technology of yesterday, Web3 is the future, but is Web3 a good business opportunity? How can you capture attention? How can you build a business in the space? How can you make a guild, a community, 
a Discord server, a blog, a podcast, any of those things. Let's talk about that space right now because anyone that wants to get anything done in the future has to get people's attention first, then they can go get something done after that. If you don't have anyone's attention, you don't matter. And one of the great reports I like to look at to understand the space is the Stream Hatchet Quarterly Report. Some fascinating facts are in here, uh, including the fact that creator fatigue is a huge factor. After COVID, guys, so many people were creating content on the internet and they had time off of work that they actually are fatigued from creating so much content and pumping the internet full of so much content that we've seen a decline in the number of unique channels across major streaming platforms over 2019, 2020, 2021, and now 2022, that number has gone down, which is really interesting. So what this means for all of you out there is there is an opportunity because the more people are streaming, 2021 being the peak, the more competition there is out there in the media for you to get attention. Now that the number of streamers has gone down, that means less competition. This is a matter of supply and demand and the lower the supply of content, and the uh, more demand is out there for you to take advantage of. And here was something that was really interesting I wanted to share with you guys in terms of the market share, just in terms of video game streaming, which crosses over into way more than just video games now, right? Um, just doing streams of just chatting, people doing hot tub streams, people playing chess, doing all sorts of things on the internet now with live streaming and shows like this are included in this report and can give you insights on what people are watching out there in the media. And this report shows us that Twitch is still the king of live streaming, capturing 67% of the market. All that purple down there is Twitch with YouTube only capturing 13%. Facebook though, coming in at about 12 to 7%, depending on how you're looking at it. And then other platforms such as Africa TV and Trovo, taking a minority portion of the market. So Twitch is still the dominant force. And speaking of Alluvium and esports, we've talked about that in the previous episodes, the biggest esports events and hours watched, esports viewership keeps going up. A trend that is really important for everyone to know. From 2019 to 2020, it stayed about the same. 2021, it spiked because of COVID by 63%. And despite the fact that less people are streaming right now, more people are watching esports on the internet, which is very, very interesting and compelling. And the top events are League of Legends, Overwatch 2, CSGO, Free Fire, and Twitch Rivals. So MOBA at the top of the list, and then lots of shooters out there in this environment. Really, really cool stuff. There's even more to take a look at here in this report. I won't go over, over all of it, top esports organizations, etc. But the point of going over this report is to say that the market, in terms of the number of people out there broadcasting and pumping content onto, into the internet, has decreased. So, does that mean there's an opportunity to build a media business right now? Let me kick it over to TSG first. What are your thoughts on the opportunities for anybody out there trying to get attention in Web3 and make some side hustle happen? Yeah, so I think, obviously, to answer the main question is, is there an opportunity? Obviously, even if there, honestly, like, even if there's more people streaming, like, like year on year, I think the opportunity is still there. It's just a bit harder, right? But the opportunity is absolutely there. And as we transition to, like, this online space, I think it's absolutely necessary. Like, I think all of us are going to need a media presence of some kind, whether it's a media, full-blown media company, like what, like myself, Scariox, and Sandra are trying to do, or if it's just someone like, just anything that you want to do in your life right now, it's like the opportunity is so crazy with, with the internet. Like our parents, grandparents didn't have this opportunity. If you want to start a coffee shop, like anything that you're interested in, like if you're a big fan of Harry Potter, you could very easily start a media company around Harry Potter. If you're into Smurfs, you could start a media company around Smurfs. Like whatever you are interested in, the great thing about the internet is you can find a community, and especially with Discord, Twitter, you can find a community to actually like build with. And I think that's the biggest thing. I think for me, what I've noticed in my little six month experience with um, with Alubia and my content creation, creating content just out there, like if you're just putting your stuff out there, you're not gonna compete with everyone. Cause like you said, there's like millions of people, like new people coming into the space that, and you're, you're fighting against established people. I think the way to go about it is by finding the community or the thing that you're interested in the most. And Andrew, you've, you've had this, um, we've had this discussion in our podcast as well. 
find the thing that you're interested in um, and then just find that community and then start providing value in that community. Start to network in that community. Spend every day, if you're like, commuting to and from work, that's what I used to do back in the day with my, my previous channel. Like when I was commuting to and from work, Instagram, legitimately, instead of consuming content, network in that community. Like message people, hey man, I like what you're doing. Show genuine love. Like don't be artificial about it. Like if you see someone that you really think is good, build that relationship. Like all of these things, in my opinion, and I could be wrong and I want to get your takes on it as well. But I think building in like something that's actually going to last takes time and there's no shortcut to it. So the way that I see like that people should approach it. And like I say, it could be about Harry Potter. It could be about, man, like antique mugs, like legitimately anything that you can think of. Find that community and build genuine relationships. It takes one message at a time, one day at a time. And to build something that's going to last a long time, it, it takes time. And then once you build your core audience, you can start to expand, uh, find other avenues and start to, to build it that way. But I think first finding that community and providing value to that community is, is the most important thing that anyone that's trying to make a name for themselves in, in any space, online space, I think that's the way to go. Uh, I don't know if what you guys think about that, if you yeah. really disagree. Yeah. I'd be curious to know what Sandro thinks. So Sandro and I have done something similar where we've created like a consulting business on the internet and we do media stuff along the way. Mm -hmm. So Sandro, what are your thoughts on having a web two media business versus a web three media business? Is there some sort of difference or does it not matter at all? Like, is this just a bunch of like fancy terminology for new tech and people are just trying to ride the trend? I mean, right now we're all interacting through Web2 tech right now, talking to each other through a video call basically <laughs> and on live streaming. No, there's nothing Web3 about this except for the discussions. So what are your thoughts on building that Web3 business today? Yeah, uh, first of all, I'm not a native English speaker. <laughs> so um, if there's uh, some grammar wrong, uh, please uh, don't be too hard. Um, yeah, I think uh, Web3 is an opportunity of a lifetime for sure for someone who wants to Yes, yeah, start a side business or want, uh, wants to be a streamer. So I see many people who are like um, playing Fortnite with like one viewer or two viewer on Twitch at the moment. And they won't make it like, the, uh, like that. And um, if people understand that Web3 is a very, very small niche at the moment, but... If you now invest your time to make good content, it can, it can be um, tokenomics. You can be like um, the uh, good in uh, tokenomics and create content around the project and just uh, um, make reviews about the, the uh, tokens they have or NFTs. And if you now invest your time in the Web3 space with like video content uh, on YouTube, TikTok, um, or creating a blog, creating a Discord community, a guild or something. This, uh, this could uh, really be, um, in my opinion, an opportunity of a lifetime. Uh, because one, I think once we start with the ones like an Illuvium, for example, um, is playable, um, it could go very fast <laughs> yeah. um, that we reach uh, the Web2 gamers and have like the interest from the uh, from thousands of people. It's not only the crypto investors. And yeah, it's, uh, I think now would be a good, good uh, time to to think about it, to start uh, like a Web3 business, because uh, with the normal games and Web2 games like Fortnite or League of Legends or stuff, if you're not an esports player, uh, I think you won't uh, be. Yeah, that it can be that uh, big if you invest your time now. That makes sense. And I'm gonna kick it over to Squaryox here in just a minute. There is some data here that I wanna take a look at. Anyone that's looking to get attention in this space, it clearly has to understand where the attention is going and what's been happening. Mm -hmm. And so here we're looking at Google Trends on the terms crypto gaming, NFT gaming, Web3 gaming, and even Alluvium. And with, it's no secret that interest was at an all-time high last year in November, right, for all of these topics, essentially, especially Alluvium, right, and any topics in this space. And that interest has been declining over time and then going up a little bit now here recently. But for the most part, it's been kind of declining and been low, significantly lower, 85% down in terms of interest across the Internet in all of the topics we're talking about, not just Alluvium. The reason why I'm highlighting that is, is this space 
you know, is this space dead? Is this the worst time to get in or is this the best time to get in? You know what I mean? So a lot of people, when the interest is high up here, they're all starting YouTube channels and they're getting hyped and starting streaming and they're jumping in on the trend. But then once the interest decreases and starts to go away, they leave. Is it like investing in that that's the literal opposite of what you should do? <laughs> or is it different in terms of building media businesses? I'd be curious to know your thoughts. Scoriox, as a tokenomics minded person, is there a parallel here between people getting in at the hype cycles at the top and then getting out at the bottom when they should have maybe done the opposite? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think I think there's two avenues to this that, that really speak to me. Now, now, the first one is that we've talked a lot about YouTube and Twitch and streaming and that sort of stuff, but media and content creation isn't just video content, right? I know there are a lot of people out there that either don't want to show their face or don't want to put out their voice out there and stuff, but there, there really should be no reason for anyone to just not put themselves into a media presence, whether it be through writing or otherwise. Even Infoluvial's website and things like that have a lot of great articles on there. And some of those writing forms are really fantastic to put yourself out there. But I think I think when it comes to content creation, really, there's, there's two big things you can't rush, and they're both based on time. You can't come in six months later and all of a sudden put out 200 videos. And you can't come in six months later and come in six months of experience without having started, right? So I think there's really no, there's no starting too early or starting too late or anything like that. Get in as soon as you can because you need to start that learning journey as soon as you possibly can. Maybe it doesn't begin with YouTube or it doesn't begin with video content, but you can't rush that process. And I think in that respect, in terms of do you start when the markets are all low and everything like that, your content is going to be much better quality when the markets do start to go up again. And that is going to help you compete against everyone else who's just starting their YouTube channels and things like that. And so the earlier you start, the better your content is going to be for when it comes time to compete with everyone else and vie for the user's attention. That totally yeah, makes sense. It, go ahead, TSG. No, I was gonna say, if I can jump in, because I 100% like, I agree with what Scarlett is saying. And I think for anyone, like, again, if you're trying to do writing, if you're trying to do videos, anything like that, agree 100%, start now. And this is something that, like what, so two things. One, if you're starting now, imagine you're playing basketball in the gym. Every video you do or every piece of content you make is you practicing. It's a free throw that you're practicing. And like what Skyrock said, when the playoffs come, when it's when it's like peak bull market again, you should be on your A game. And this is what the time is now. Secondly, you're like, and then this is something that I learned from one of my favorite music artists, and I, I have to say it on a podcast, but like Russ, he said, like, this is the thing that he said. We're so used to people like putting out like one content every two weeks or like putting it really slowly. And it's like, how often have we seen like a, a musical artist put out a song that went completely viral? I'll use like, uh, what's his name? Designer with Panda. I don't know how like you guys, uh, if you guys know what Panda is, but like the Panda, Panda, Panda. Yeah. So like he had that one song and it took over the world. And then, and then if I really liked it and I searched up designer on my phone, guess what? There's nothing else there. You can't be like, like I can't be your, like you can't be my favorite artist if you've got one song and that's the same for content creators as well. So like, for like, that's the reason why if you can understand that anyone that follows me that they'll understand why I pump out as much content as I do. Cause I want to make sure that when it does hit, when something does happen and if they find me, they can spend days looking at my content. I'll, like that's the that's the mindset you have to to take. Like one, it's practice. Every time you get better, you get better at thumbnails. You get better at at titles. You get better at pacing, editing, everything. It's just practice. And second, once it, things really blow up, you need to have like a library of things where once they they get addicted to one, like once it's drugs. Once they get addicted to your content, once they can go to the second hit. Then the He's third. He's a drug dealer. He's a digital drug dealer. <laughs> hey man, the streets, the streets and content, it's, it's very, very similar, right? Um, but I think no, there's thank a lot you for sharing to, that. To, to that. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. I, I used to literally for a living help people go full time making content and media businesses for a living. And a lot of what you're saying is true. The time to get in on a trend is before it blows up, before it peaks. The time to get in on a game is pre launch. Then you build that library of content before the game launches, before the trend launches, before it goes mainstream. You become one of the authorities on that topic, and then you ride that trend wave as it goes up. 
90% of content creators and media businesses that went full time and went big use that precise strategy. Don't just take my words for it. Take a look at what we're doing on the Alluvium Archive channel to your point TSG. Right now, I've already chopped up with the team 132 Illuvium videos on this archive channel, deep in a bear market when interest is at an all-time low over the last year. Why would I be building a library of 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 videos about Illuvium on a You're channel the here? Ready. <laughs> it's because, it's not the drugs, uh, but I understand your analogy with the drugs. Yeah, 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 the yeah, reason yeah. why we're building this giant archive is when interest increases, we will have that massive library of content about Alluvium, where any topic anyone could be searching about Alluvium, there's a video answering that with smart people giving you a relatable answer with visuals. And that's gonna pay massive dividends longer term. So if you can be the type of person before a trend blows up to start investing in practicing making content every day, your first 200 videos, your first 200 articles, your first 200 podcasts are gonna be terrible. You're gonna be very bad at it for a long time. <laughs> But then once you, but once you get a couple hundred repetitions in, then you get a thousand in, then you get 10,000 in. I'm at like 15,000 repetitions right now. I'm making content like this over the last 15 years. Then you can really start to understand the mastery of it. You can start to get the awkwards out and then you can start to be one of the best in your space. That is you, hopefully you can be something like that as the trend rises. So if anybody out there was wanting to understand when is the time to start building a Web3 media business, it's actually right now. When interest is at an all-time low, that means competition is at an all-time low, which means your opportunity to get viewership has never been better. The odds have never been more in your favor. <laughs> Any other um, thoughts on this matter? Otherwise, we've got a whole gigantic country mm -hmm. to summarize basically yeah. in like 10 minutes here, Germany. Any other final thoughts uh, on the creator subject? I, I just wanted to yeah. ask. I just wanted to ask you guys one thing, and it's like, do you think everyone is actually cut out for it? Because like all of us know how hard and like the dedication it takes. So I'm just curious. Do you guys think everyone is actually cut out for it? I think. No. I think the hardest the hardest thing for me <laughs> has been to know your limits. Um, I I do personally believe that everyone is cut out for it, but obviously everyone needs to go at a very different pace. Someone might only be able to produce a video every two weeks to not burn themselves out and someone might be able to produce a video every day and not burn themselves out. I think, I think understanding your limits and quite frankly, I'm still barely know mine, um, is, is a skill set that is very difficult to learn. But once you do learn it, it, it will, it will be very important in your content creating journey, I suppose. Well, here's a question from the audience that let's bring up here to the panel. You know, there's a point made earlier. Isn't everyone a content creator? The answer is you have to be now. If you want yeah. a job, you need to create content on LinkedIn if you want anyone to take you seriously. Uh, you know, if you, like seriously, if, if you don't have a personal brand now, you might not be able to get a job even today or in the future. Everything's moving digital, everything's moving online. So content is mandatory to make a living now. So here's a question from Greedy Hamster. Isn't finding your niche as a content creator as important as your timing? Sandro, what are your thoughts on that, of finding the right game, the right niche, the right topic versus getting into the market at the same time? Are these exclusive or are you discovering these at the same time uh, when you're making videos? What are your thoughts on that, Sandro? No, I think uh, that's why I'm saying it's, it's for me, it's an opportunity of a lifetime with Web3 and crypto games at the moment because if you want to grow on social media, uh, you have to find your niche. It's you can't upload a League of Legends let's play where you go mid lane or something. No one's gonna watch your videos and stuff. And when I heard uh, about crypto games last year, it was uh, around June or July. I read an article about Axie Infinity. I never bought crypto before. I didn't know anything about Ethereum, Bitcoin, and stuff. I only was in my e-commerce consulting coaching bubble. And um, I was like, okay, that's crazy. It's going to change uh, a whole industry. It's going to change the gaming industry and much more. Um, I'm going all in. So I was like, uh, just uh, so you know my background, I'm doing YouTube content since 2017 in German, uh, talking about selling products on Amazon. It's Amazon FBA. I think uh, maybe someone heard about it. And I was like, the biggest YouTube channel in Germany with uh, 26,000 uh, followers. And um, 
I read about crypto games and NFTs and I was like, okay, this this could or this is it and I, I'm going all in. And I was from one day to another, I was on my Instagram uh, with my uh, making an Instagram story and telling the people, okay, um, tomorrow there's a new YouTube channel and people were uh, maybe expect, uh, expected like a lifestyle channel or something because I moved to Dubai last year. But mm. then I talked about <laughs> NFTs and uh, crypto games and people was like, oh, uh, what's wrong with this uh, business guy? <laughs> now he's talking about uh, some uh, ape pictures and stuff but uh, i think uh, you know I, I, uh, i was going all in and i'm all in at the moment but now i'm the the leading crypto gaming channel in germany with 14000 uh, subscribers and i think um or just to give you some motivation everyone who's watching this i'm pretty sure at least you know someone who is trying to become a streamer yeah, I also have uh, friends who, who are everybody right knows now somebody streaming. who's trying to make a podcast yeah. or do a live stream or start a blog yes. or, or start a guild and, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I have friends they are streaming two, three times a week on Twitch with maybe five viewers. They love what they do, but they also uh, want to become uh, or make it um, to become bigger streamers. You know, they can play different games and stuff. So I think at the moment or right now it's the best time to start something take this uh, this content uh, here for your personal motivation and just start anything it can be a blog it can be a discord it can be twitch chatting crypto uh, tokenomic stuff you have so many opportunities and because we are in a, a super small niche right now it's very likely that if you're going to stick to it and keep going, that you will become, uh, uh, how did you say it? Um, a relevant person. Once, relevant, yeah. A relevant person once uh, Web3 will moon. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of moon, the German market is mooning right now. I was shocked at some of the statistics that I learned about Germany. Let me just share some of what I'm talking about right now. This man's the king of Germany, as we know. How can you be king of a market that has 34 million Germans play video games and computer games, which shocked me. 36% of all Germans or German gamers play regularly and 42% play occasionally. With the average German gamer being 37.5 years old, really, really interesting and what was cool about uh, this report, I looked, I was like, okay, well, how much of the market does that really represent? How much money is in German gaming right now? Yeah, talk about $11 billion in revenue in 2021 with 17% year over year growth from 2020 to 2021, making Germany the fifth largest gaming market in the entire world. And I thought that this was fascinating. And this is a market that you know, if you're American in particular, you don't pay attention to other countries because you think you're number one. Well, guess what? Germany is very relevant. And if you're interested in the Web3 space, if you're interested in the crypto gaming space, these games are going to be more global, more international, and more directly tied in to other nations than Web2 games ever were. Because not only are the player bases going to be international, but the ownership of the actual protocols will be international, the governance will be international, and as you can see from Alluvium's Discord as an example, the, uh, the nations that come together to make up that core community are from all over the world, more so in Web3 ever than we saw in Web2. So, Sandro, we've got the resident expert on this topic. The first thing I want to know is, <laughs> should German gamers come over to NFT gaming? I mean, it sounds like they're doing great over in that Web2 gaming they've been playing a lot of. Why should they care about NFT gaming and Web3 gaming at all? Like, why would why would Germans care? Can you give us some insight? Yeah, we have a big problem in uh, Germany and in the German community because we have not a single big YouTuber or streamer who is pro NFTs or pro metaverse, pro crypto games. There's literally no one who is like, hey, this, this is going to be huge and this is the future. But there are many, many um, content creators who are against NFTs. And I think that's um, 
that's a big big problem in the german market and it's going to be it takes uh, it will take more time to get the german player into uh, web3 because the why the are they against it well what, what's the fud what are the top reasons why they're against it and what are the what what how are they scaring people about nfts i, I think people are not uh, educated enough but they have a it's uh, i don't know if it's a german problem only but the the people in germany they have a very strong opinion but they don't know anything about the topic you can uh, uh, speak with them about uh, that about sounds like uh, america Bitcoin's <laughs> yeah, like but, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you can uh, talk with someone about bitcoin and they will be like ah oh, no this is bullshit and scam and then you could ask him okay but uh, where did you get your information from and they will be like my co-worker said something bad about it so it's bad or something so there's no um they are not educated but have a very strong opinion and that this is a big problem in germany because we have very very bad content creators with uh, with a um, with like 100,000 clicks on every uh, YouTube video and they are talking bullshit they don't know anything about NFTs and they're like oh look this NFT scam and this stupid bought ape pictures and stuff and <laughs> I think for the German market it's very very important that uh, the, a good game is playable so mm -hmm. that's why uh, mm -hmm. no financial advice um, but i'm a very big uh, not a very big but i'm a um a lot of invested <laughs> invested in illuvium i bought a tier four land and also got mm -hmm. a lot of ilv uh, staked big but baller i think once the open world <laughs> is ready and it's a free to play game I think this will be a, a, a maybe a, a change for the the German consumer at least, but we have a very big problem on the content creator side. There is no like um, I don't know. Can we talk about people who are banned on Twitch? We can uh, say no, names, do right? not, not because possible. we're streaming on Twitch. Don't say their names, or we will be we will be banned. From I'm Twitch. not. I think we can't oh, talk wow. about it, but it's not. It should not yeah. be the main topic. But you know, in America, there are some popular streamer and gamers who uh, started a Web three company or something. So, and we, in Germany, there's literally creators that no are not one. very respectful and also have doctorate degrees. Yeah, I know who you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah, right. But <laughs> yeah. in Germany, there's no one. There's no one. But we. Uh, but I know. Um, that some creators got NFTs, but they can't uh, talk about it because the community uh, would uh, would start to hate them because everyone uh, is like, "Oh, NFTs are scam." So the German market would is going to be uh, very hard for the German creators. <laughs> but I think once we have gameplay and good games and not like, oh, this game is coming in a few months and soon, 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 once people can see it and play it, it's it will be slow and steady, uh, the growth. But um, does this the remind German market, you? I, yeah, I, I want to ask a question. Does this remind you at all of um, how, how, how did things go when let's say we went from single player games that you could buy with a little literal physical box and you put in the CD in your computer to online gaming and then the transition from online gaming to mobile gaming. In America, the reaction seems very similar to what you were describing where when we went from holding a physical box and owning the game and playing it on your computer to online games, everyone complained in the United States about how this was going to ruin gaming and it's terrible and evil corporations. Then when we went from online gaming to them being on your phone, all the conversations were about how phone games and mobile games were the devil and their evil monetization. But yet in each of these transitions, despite the fact that the mainstream narrative was negative and people said this was terrible for gaming, they all played those games and gave these companies all their money mm. anyway. So are we just basically running into that situation all over again? And is this just a technological pattern? Humans don't like new technology. They bitch about it but then they ultimately use it and give it all their money. I mean, is that what we're yeah. looking at here or is German or are Germans going to be more hard headed? Because I know that Germans can be a bit like a rock and immovable sometimes. So what are your thoughts on that? Nine. 
Nein. Ja, <lacht> 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 um, yeah, you know, I'm not a, I, I'm not a, um, a gaming expert, you know, I have an e-commerce company and stuff, so I'm also started the gaming channel with the Web3 and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I think I don't want to be rude or something, but at the moment we are we are in a in a stage like where we talk about investments a bit you know no financial advice okay but we can't play right now we're just some people who thinks um that we know how the future will look like in the gaming space but um we can't play right now and i think the the normal consumer the normal gamer um doesn't buy crypto doesn't buy uh, stocks or something right he's like okay i got my nine to five job and i want to play video games and now there are some people on the internet saying no crypto is the future web3 uh, is uh, the future and stuff so i think it's also very hard to understand uh, at the moment for the uh for the normal gamer but i think in the german market there is like a small bubble of content creators it's, it's very different from the english uh, space they're like maybe 10 to 20 content creators and they all react to their live streams and youtube videos so it's not like there are thousands of uh, content creators it's more like okay there are 10 20 very very big streamers and if you want to reach the the followers of these uh, of these uh, content creators um one of them maybe needs to start also playing like some web3 games because i think at the moment they the the german bubble is i don't know what is a good word in english yeah I don't there's want basically to, to this inner rude, but, circle of a core group of creators that have all of the attention in germany yes and if and you can all, get just the, a couple of those guys to try these out then it could expand and spread like wildfire within yes germany. because the, the community is like they're like sheeps you know mm. they don't uh, do their research. no offense to all of our viewers no offense but... no offense <laughs> Uh, it's, it's actually it's more like in the comments <laughs> yeah it, no it's not they're like oh no nfts are scam and you could ask uh, but what is an nft yeah it's a non-fungible token yeah but what is an nft why is it a scam is internet scam for you no it's not but they don't have a, a like like uh, education or something but they have so much opinion right so <laughs> right uh, i think this is this this will be tough for me and Tom. <laughs> you know, there was an I, interesting I, topic that you brought up, uh, and I want to kick it over to you, Scoriox. Mm -hmm. um, Sandro was talking about how the early, let's say, Gen 1 crypto games were very investy, let's say. It was all about, like, Axie Infinity as a, the most uh, famous example. People bought into Axie Infinity. They infinitely printed SLP. They made as much money as possible. All the rhetoric in the media was about how you should buy now, it's going to the moon, metaverse is taking off. It was all about the money making, not about the games. So I want to ask you, as somebody who focuses on tokenomics that back projects, how do you, you know, globally, this isn't just for Germany, how do you keep audiences engaged in crypto gaming, NFT gaming, Web3 gaming, whatever it is that we're going to call this, if it's all about making the money? Like, I know you focus on the money aspects of it and the tokenomics, but if it's all about making the money, is this really gaming? Do you keep people's attention? What if everybody loses money, let's say in a bear market, are they all gone again next round? How do you see that kind of playing out in terms of keeping people's attention if money is such a focus in this space? I think I think that's one of the reasons I found such a passion for Alluvium is that the money side of things is really separate from the gameplay, right? The money side of things is more like investing in a stock for a gaming company rather than investing in gaming assets and investing in playing the game and things like that, like Axie Infinity um, attempted, right? So I, I think I really like that divide where Alluvium's token is more about investing in the success of Alluvium rather than investing in playing the game or anything like that. Obviously, this is not financial advice. Um but yeah, so I really like that divide. And I think we're going to see more of that in the future. Obviously, the gaming and the the good game side of things is going to take precedence as we move forward. Um, it's be become very clear that the game has to be good to sustain a player base. And even if you can earn from the game, you need a player base to be able to earn from the game. So you can't have one without the other. So I think the gaming and the 
the good how good the game is is going to take uh, a front seat and then the investing side of things I think is going to be quite separate and we're going to have that divergence as we move forward. So the other thing, I can't remember what I was going to say. Um, the other do, you thing mind I commenting, to say, do you mind commenting on this one I pulled up on the screen? I feel like this is a huge topic to cover. Gamers have endured overly aggressive monetization in their games for over a decade. They're jaded and maybe they see NFT gaming as just another way to extract money from them. I suspect that in the German market, there's a bit of that sentiment as well. I mean, Sandra, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but gamers have been extracted for mouse, keyboard controllers, accessories, microtransactions, skins, your graphics cards you're overpaying for, your PlayStation 5 that's $1,200, the t-shirts, the conferences, the plushies, they are just sucking all of your money from you. And NFT gaming is just another way to suck the money out of your wallet. How do you, as somebody who focuses on tokenomics, do you, <laughs> you know, you know, how do we fight that perception? If there's all these new economic and financial aspects to these games, they've it's got to be nefarious, right? I mean, how do you counter that? I think I think you can't underestimate it. Um, one of my favorite games of all time was Star Wars Battlefront Two, and it Dice or EA or whatever just completely shattered it in Australia. Once people saw that it was pay to win and things, I can't find a game in Australian servers anymore. And it's really, really upsetting, but it, sh it just shows the power of the consumer and how much control they really have. But that being said, I think a lot of this market is driven by social media. And what you find is as soon as crypto goes back up again and crypto, NFT and so on becomes the buzzwords that drive traffic, you're going to get a lot of people that are using NFTs to drive views to their channels and things like that. And eventually if NFTs do slightly tick into like 51% good, 49% bad, then that is going to be like a wildfire spread effect, in my opinion, that people are going to be like talking about NFTs in a good way because they just want the views. They want the clicks. That's that's all this that's all this is at the moment. It's, it's being able to drive traffic to your audience. Mm. And as soon as it shifts just a little bit, now everyone's on board the NFT train. I see. <laughs> sort of like how uh, corporations, media businesses, entertainment companies were using the term metaverse over and over again. We're buying Bungie because it's a metaverse. We're investing into Epic Games because it's a metaverse. Every investment in the space was somehow a metaverse investment, even though they were just buying companies that had nothing to do with metaverse. It's kind of like that. Like they want to jump on the trend because it's the trend and because they know they'll get brownie points with their board of directors kind of thing. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, so I, I like to think that over time, if something is good, people will recognize it as good. It's not much of a better way to say that, but how I'm viewing it is NFTs will eventually come into the spotlight again, right? And I expect most people or at least most Web2 companies and things to talk about them in a bad way. But eventually enough people will want to educate themselves on the subject further and further. And they will learn that maybe everyone will eventually be able to make up their own mind. And eventually they'll be like, oh yeah, NFTs aren't so bad. Then over the course of time, People be like, yeah, they aren't such a bad thing. And all these other companies that are trying to talk them down and say they're really bad, their views will drop off. And they'll be like, okay, we have to go the other direction now to get the views again. So I, I think it's just it's just a vie for attention. And eventually when enough people are educated on the subject, the, vi the most sense is going to be for NFTs are good. Um, but I, th I definitely think a rebranding of the topic sentence, I've seen it a few times in the chat already, that they're probably going to be called digital collectibles or whatever it is. Um, down I wanted the road, to bring that up. I wanted to bring I don't that think up. They're going to be NFTs. Yeah. Do, so let's talk about the terminology then. And folks watching live in chat, we want to hear from you as well. Do you like the term NFT or do you like the term digital collectibles or do you like neither? So NFTs, digital collectibles, neither. Let's go around. Starting with Sandro, which one do you think is better? NFT, digital collectibles, or neither? And who cares? Uh, what are your thoughts? I think NF. I think NFT is fine because an NFT is not only a digital collectible thing. It could also just be a contract or something. And um, I just uh, think it, it needs more time. But I think NFT for uh, mass adoption and for the future, it's, it's okay. For games, sure, we should educate people that an NFT in a game is a, is a digital collectible thing, like in skin 
or an Illuvial. Yeah. Got it. But TSG, what do you what, fine. Okay, one vote for NFTs. TSG, what do you think? NFT is fine. I agree. NFT is fine. Uh, and like, it's just like, it's just a fundamental technology. So I don't think we need to like, yo, change it. Like an NFT is an NFT. It's a non-fungible token. It, it is what it is. And then like, like you guys are saying, oh, the, the guys in chat are saying in-game, you can call it an in-game asset. Um, but it just, it's just a more specific, like, like a dog is a dog and you got German Shepherds, you have like Dalmatians. It, it is what it is, but a dog is a dog. So it's the same thing in NFTs and NFT, you might have membership NFTs, you might have in-game assets, different, different things, but it's just an NFT. Got it. We're getting the opinion of people that are already in right now. Still, so just so yeah. we're clear, all of you guys are already here. So you're not turned off by a non-fungible token. Go tell non-fungible token to somebody on the street and they'll like punch you in the face. Scoriox, what do you think about NFT versus digital collectible versus to hell with both of those options? Do you think it matters? What do you think? No, I'm going, I'm going way against the grain here. Um, not NFT. I think, I think there's two big reasons for this. Firstly, I didn't know what the word fungible meant when I first learned about the word NFT. And that is a problem for any brand is explaining your thing. Have you ever tried to explain non-fungible to someone? It sucks. It's awful. <laughs> it's such a it's such a confusing term. No one is going to latch onto it. Um, and I wrote a thesis on digital collectibles. That was pretty much the title was digital collectibles. As soon as you put those two words in front of any person that is like even in high school, they know what digital collectible means. So I just think it makes the most sense um, long term. I'm going to have to agree. I, I don't like the term NFT as well. Explaining, I had to explain fungibility to my mom on the but, phone. But what is the difference then? Like, well, the in, thing is, if you say NFT, the League of it's Legends, the League of Legends skin is also a digital collectible thing, you know. And also, yeah. And also, I want to say like the thing that. But people, but people, really quick, really quick, people trust yeah. League of Legends skins. They already know what those are, and they know it's a digital collectible. So that's good. So by so so that's how every technology gets adopted, right? You don't say it's a new thing. You say it's like the old thing you always collected, your Fortnite skin, your League of Legends skin. Those were digital collectibles. Yeah. But now the difference is you actually own your digital collectibles and you can keep them in your wallet versus having to tell them, okay, let's talk about fungibility. All right, let me yeah. pull a dollar out of my pocket and talk about how <laughs> this can be printed by the, you lost them already, right? <laughs> so just like with mail to email, right? It's like mail, but it's electronic. Okay, digital collectibles in Web 2 versus digital collectibles in Web 3. It's like League of Legends skins, but you own it. I don't know, it seems like a pretty easy explain. TSG, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, like, I understand what you're saying, but I still, like, like, you don't need to explain what an NFT is. Like, when people go to an ATM, do they know what ATM actually means? Like, do they know what it stands for? No, but they know they go to an ATM, they get money out. So you could use the same thing with NFT. You don't need to say, oh, yo, so it's a non fungible token and this is what it means you can just say yo it's a thing online that you own done it's, we just call it an nft so i say i'm going to the atm to get cash out i have an nft that i own online done like i don't think it's if it works for atms and things like that i don't see why it's too much of a difference i understand where you're coming from um but i just don't think it's just a new thing i think if you repeat it enough like we we get used to it like i mean like the the masses get used to it but i might be wrong i, I might be wrong all of these are good points. We have more to discuss in terms of NFTs though. For example, of the current applications of NFTs that are out there, which are the most useful and which are the least useful? So the reason why I'm bringing that up is, if we go look at, I don't know if you've heard of this website, it's called OpenSea. I think it's about the oceans or something, <laughs> check it out. And here we go look at the top collections. There's aliens, I don't know, throwing up fire or something here. There's some, crappy looking pixel thing, I guess. And there's a skull of a dead ape, I guess, who likes to boat. So I'm just wanting to bring up, you know, as a normie taking a look at the space and if I'm like, okay, I've heard of OpenSea in the news, I'm gonna go look and see what's out there. I, none of this looks like it does anything good for me in my life or looks like it actually is gonna help me or be interesting in any way. And so the question I'm wanting to ask, just on the surface, when we're talking about, you know, 1% of people that are coming in are in, but then you go shop out there in the NFT space and you go look and see what's out there. You're like, what does this have to offer to me? 
What are your thoughts on the current utility of NFTs dominated by profile pictures, dominated by kind of media hype, dominated by buy now and it's gonna go up in infinity value later? Is this uh, useful or not? And or do we have any NFTs around today that are actually useful um, versus maybe the top stuff that's out there that's almost purely aesthetic, social, and kind of uh, social clout and credibility sort of arena? What are your thoughts on that? I'd like to start with Sandro. I know I just made fun of all these top projects, but to make a point, if I was a, nor <laughs> if I was a normie looking at these top yeah. projects, I'd be like, well, what the F does a f fire throw up alien yeah. do for me? Like, why should I care? Just Let's as make a some fun about a, a billion dollar valued company. Who the fuck is Yuga Labs, you know? <laughs> no, it's like, um, you know, we're building the metaverse at the moment. So I think every, every NFT is, um, I don't know, how, how do you say it in English? It's like, even if it's only a collectible thing that people want to gamble with, like it's, uh, the value will increase and stuff. I think everything is fine. But for me, personal, um, is this a question where I do invest or what I'm looking for? Or what What should I say, Andrew? Uh, what you're looking, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a matter of about what's valuable to you is what you're trying to say. Okay. What so, is the value okay. to you, right, with any of these projects? So out of anything that's out there right now, what is useful mm -hmm. to you right now? And what is okay. not useful to you right now out of the offerings? I just showed open C top projects just as an example of the types of yeah. things that are out there in terms of NFTs. Is any of that actually useful to you? Okay, so um, I'm not a collectible NFT buyer, so I don't have a bought ape or muted ape or other NFTs with uh, no utility. I only uh, buy gaming NFTs. I'm looking for a good land and um, also for some characters in some games. I'm, um, when I invest at the moment, I, I'm, I'm, I, I ask myself if I think this company or this, this game will be relevant the next five years. This was also my question when I invested in Illuvium and bought my Illuvium lands. Um, I really think that the, the Warwick brothers and the studio got the the attitude to build a good gaming studio. Uh, it it could also it could also be like a Web two gaming studio. I think they uh, they can create good games in the future. That's why I bought uh, Illuvium Land, and I know Illuvium Land, for example, got utility. I will generate some uh, fuel and uh, stuff, or uh, or like the blueprint NFTs. So this is something I'm I'm, uh, I, I'm personally interested in. But I also bought uh, an other deed NFT uh, land NFT from the other side metaverse from this small company, uh, Yuga Labs. Maybe you heard. <laughs> from the, uh, yeah, yeah, so, dead dead yeah. apes or whatever, and on, on a boat. Apes, but they yeah. so so you're more interested in the gaming aspect of this. You know, I'm just showing yeah. Immutable X's marketplace. These are mostly gaming projects. So you like something that you can interact with, that you can use, that you can play with, that has yeah. more than just like a, it's in my collection, it has some aesthetic properties. It goes beyond like, let's say, just being a work of art, if you will, if we were to use like traditional collectibles, to being it's something that like, you can actually interact with and engage with deeply. Like and those are the sorts of things that example. you like. Mm -hmm. You have, they yeah, are Gods Unchained. Gods Unchained, you can buy like cards if you like the game and uh, think they could uh, build a good community. Uh, this could be interesting also for Guild of Guardians. If you think uh, mobile games uh, and Web3 is a good, uh, could be a good opportunity. Um, you could buy a character or something. And uh, yeah, th this, these are the, the only NFTs I'm, I'm, I'm looking for. So I'm not a collectible uh, NFT investor. I never understood. I, 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 uh, I never got uh, my. I, I never wanted to invest in a board ape. I'm in like every YouTube video when I'm talking about Yuga Labs or the board apes. I was like, okay, I think in the future the value goes up, and I was always ri uh, always right. But I never bought one <laughs> because it it, it, it it never felt right for me to invest in a collectible NFT only. So. 
I'm so only just, have, just having the collectible, having the financial appreciation was not exciting to you. That was not no. enough. TSG, no. I see you signaling over there. What do you want to say well, about I this? I mean, I of just, the NFT just... offerings that are out there, what are the most useful and what are the least useful in the world for you? Yeah, uh, I wasn't signaling. I was actually just changing my, my AC, turning it. It was a bit cold. Um, in regards to the what's actually useful. Okay, so like all of the things that you showed uh, on OpenSea right now, it's just art, essentially. Like for the most part, it's just art. Um, I don't think that's enough to actually onboard people because it is just speculation. Even in like the fine art world, uh, art is speculation. I think we're only going to see genuine adoption. And this is my my opinion. And I'd love to know what you guys think is the, the biggest, outside of gaming, what's the biggest opportunity for NFT uses? Um, we'll get into that at some point, I, I'm, I'm sure. But uh, so the thing that I what I think is going to happen and what I feel is going to happen is once we start actually transitioning from things that we do today, uh, things that we use today for papers and stuff like that, like a plane ticket, I think that's going to be an NFT. I think movie tickets, concert tickets are going to be NFTs. Like Michael Jackson's, uh, Michael Jackson's Super Bowl stumps are still being sold. Those are collectible. Like these are things that you can use in real life and then collect it. Like how many people would have bought that stuff and lost it? But if you have an NFT, it's a lot hard or a digital collectible for those that want that uh it's a lot harder to lose that right so i think um things like with the the super bowl thing <laughs> the super bowl michael jackson super bowl 100%. no i want the digital collectibles thing but anyway uh, okay. please continue okay, socal okay. omi homie in chat on youtube agrees yeah. with you movie tickets experiences uh, real exactly. world products but on the blockchain to prove that ownership it's, that exactly. takes this beyond just being a uh an art collectible, something that has Correct. this only subject. Well, the thing is, in both cases, it's got subjective value, but one is connected with a real life experience, whereas the other one's only connected with whether you think it's aesthetically pleasing or valuable in some other emotional way. Correct. And it's just like, it's like, it's what we're using already. Like if you go to Subway, for example, you get like your sub or like Starbucks, like your, you get 10, 10 stamps and then you get it right. But instead of having like a real life stamp or something on your phone, like it could be an NFT. And they could like commission, like for example, and I think this is why I went back to communities back like uh, at the start of the conversation. I think it's important to build that uh, community because if you're, for example, saying you're starting a coffee, a coffee business, right? And you're trying to compete with Starbucks. It'd be a good idea for you to actually support your own community, hire a, an artist of your local community to build an NFT collection card, right? Not a, what, a membership card uh, when you go to a place a lot, I forget what it's called, but you guys know what I mean. Um, What's the word called? Do you can you guys help me out when you go to a, sh a place a frequency card? I don't know. A loyalty You're talking card? about like a loyalty. A, lo a loyalty card, a loyalty program. That's, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. So like, if you're like a coffee shop owner and you get like one of your local kids of the community to design that, and one day they blow up, that increases in value. Yes, but for the local community, they're going to see that one you're supporting the community, and they're going to have a loyalty card anyway. So they might as well use it anyway, right? They're supporting the community, plus it's beneficial for them. They don't need to carry a physical card. Like people have thick wallets, like, or purses. You, you get rid of all those things. So I think more like for my mom, for like people like my mom, my grandma, like a lot of people's moms, gaming is not what's going to onboard them. A Starbucks <laughs> loyalty card is going to onboard them. That's I a really good that. point. And I love the idea of, to of tying in with even something as ordinary as buying coffee tying in your local community and owning a piece of your local community, mm -hmm. even when you're just booping for coffee through an NFT on the blockchain, that yeah. totally makes sense. I could see my mom as well wanting to do that and wanting to support that. They love going to the local market in their area and buying art from local artists, even if it's crappier than mainstream right. artists, just cause it's local. So that's right. a cool real life example outside of this NFT bubble we're all in, where these NFTs could be useful to the general public. That's cool. Yeah. The and question also, I have, if, if go I can, ahead, go ahead. Sorry, if I can add to one last thing. Sorry, Andrew, there's this one thing that I really want to get across as well. It's like, so that's what one of the real, the real well, like capabilities of, of that for like people like our moms and stuff like that. Another thing is like, I don't know in most countries, but most countries, if you buy a gym membership, like most people, we know how gyms work. You pay for it and then you stop going. That's what most people do. And once you stop going, what happens to that membership? It's wasted. It's done. Well, let's say I like what if that was an NFT and let's say I'm done with the membership. I can't be bothered going anymore, but my brother wants to go. Oh, maybe I wouldn't sell this to my brother. I'd just give it to him. But like my cousin, <laughs> they can pay for it. Like I could sell it to them, right? So yeah. they now have ownership of that membership. 
they're still using that and I don't get fully ripped off. Or you and could loan what? it or rent it or do any other financial transaction the with that gets, membership. And the yeah. gym gets a royalty. So it's like, it's more, it's beneficial for them because they continue getting royalties that way. All right, my cousin gives up on it. He gives it to someone else and it's consistent royalties forever, perpetuity. And it's like, it makes business sense on that end. And for us as well, we don't feel like we're getting scanned. So that's just another thing. Sorry, I, I did jump in there again. So I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, this is a really interesting case. Let me ask Goryox though. So one thing that everybody wants to know about, this is gonna be our last topic and then we're gonna have to call it here for the stream. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got all of these different uh, layer one and layer twos that all of this could take place on. Uh, and my question for you, Scoriox, somebody that still studies tokenomics, which layer ones and layer twos do you think are set up for success? All of them, none of them, or why? Or do you think it matters at all? So, you know, we're talking about the range of super hardcore folks in this space buying a crypto punk on one end of the spectrum all the way to the other end of the spectrum of maybe your mom in 10 years is going to Starbucks and booping to get an NFT of a local artist. Which layer ones and layer twos are gonna be successful in that space? Is it a ton of them, only a few, or none of the ones that we currently see? Be curious to know how you think about that, Amigo. I think, oh, it, it's such a hard one because crypto changes every six months, probably like every month if you're really watching it close enough. Um, I think there's a big distinction here. Firstly, um, blockchain gaming is a good example of something that can't really sustain on Ethereum because even once sharding comes into it and things like that, it can't do nearly as many transactions as blockchain gaming will need, especially when you have hundreds or even thousands of blockchain games. No, the merge, so man, 2.0, bro. It's going to save It's going to save everybody and everything. It's going to change my life, right? Um, <laughs> um, yes. So I think layer, layer two solutions, especially down the road, will be really, really important for things like blockchain gaming. And I'm sure there are so many other uses of NFTs and technologies and things that we haven't even thought of that just won't be doable on layer one. That being said, I still think layer one is going to be the most important factor here. Firstly, it's the biggest place that is onboarding people. And until that changes, layer one will never, ever go away and it will always be the biggest. The other thing is that I believe layer one um, is the biggest aspect for security, right? So you, the, the deeper you go into these layers, layer two, maybe there's a layer three one day, um, eventually you're sacrificing security for speed. The idea of the Ethereum blockchain is everyone needs to validate every single transaction every single time. And the reason they do that is so that no one can ever attack the network and the network is quite safe. The other side of this is that Ethereum is so large, being in the hundreds of billions of dollars um, or the tens of billions of dollars, I can't remember, it keeps moving so quickly, but it's so large that it's really difficult to attack the network and it's so decentralized as well. So for that reason, I think things like if it really does shape the new financial system and the new financial network of the world, I don't think you can ship that off to a layer two. I think you have to live with the gas fees because these gas fees are what's protecting the network. That being said, it, Ethereum might be slow in comparison to layer two solutions, but it's still way faster than the current financial systems of the world. <laughs> Thank you. That's a really good thought right there. So it's always security versus speed and convenience. And as we can see, um, as you move further and further out on that speed and convenience scale out to being on exchanges or lending platforms, Celsius and Voyager come to mind and you extend yourself out in the risk range of, of being here, there in the core on Ethereum, all the way out to being on some third party platform that's interacting with it on your behalf, you're extending yourself out on the risk curve. It's time to shill, my friends. Shill, shill, shill. Starting with Sandro, biggest community in Germany I've heard. King of Germany, I've also heard. Where can people follow you and what should they do? Shill away, my friend. What? What, what should I shill? You're supposed to tell everybody to follow you or say something that you want people to do. Okay. Yeah, if you uh, understand German, you can follow me. <laughs> um, <laughs> otherwise, I will be here again with my Oxford English. <laughs> All right, cool. His link is in the YouTube description below. Go find his channel. He does English interviews as well. He's interviewed me on his channel. Great community. And uh, if you know anyone... Uh, who is a part of a German gamer, a part of the German community, or wants to see what that's all about? Literally royalty. TSG, shill away. 
Uh, yeah, well, yeah, awesome. So obviously, uh, my link is down below. TSG Alluvium NFT is my main channel. Uh, yo, I need to say with Skyrox here as well, we have our Augment podcast. And so please do us a favor. Check out our Augment's clip channel. Um, we do daily stuff over there. And also, I do need to shout out my new podcast with uh, with Annie Knows and I Will Crypto. Uh, Gaming on the Block, we rotate uh, every week on our channel. So uh, if you check out the channel, my, uh, the episode on mine, you'll find the links there, links for, for their channels. And we also have Gaming on the Block's clips. So we are going hard and building this media business 100%. Thank you, Andrew. You're welcome, dude. I love the arm movements. He's like, I'm going hard, 100%. He's always bringing it in the camera. Let's go. Let's go. Scoriox, what you got, buddy? Um, oh, I mean, I've already shielded myself plenty on, on the socials and all the rest of it. Um, just my YouTube channel is great. Um, tonight, I have an interview I had with JP from Arcade dropping. Mm. It's in about like 18 hours from now, I think. JP, yeah, friend of Aluvatox, now. friend of the show. JP's a good listen. So where can people find that one? Um, so that'll just be on my YouTube channel. So that's dropping um, at 10 p.m. Sydney time or my, maybe 9 p.m. Sydney time. I think it's 10 p.m. But um, that that's a really, really good video, a really good talk. I wanted to get to the bottom of Arcade um, because I think it's going to be a really interesting player in the space. And I'm very eager to, to be more involved with it in the future. And like, yeah, I don't know. I think it's, it's a great talk. If anyone was confused about what Arcade's doing and if it's going to be really interesting, um, then definitely make sure to tune into that video. Perfect. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all of our guests for joining today. And we'll be live once more with Aluva Talks next week on the same channels on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you have not already, get over to alluvium.io slash alluvatars, punch in your email, and you'll be notified of all of the updates. Huge new features such as albums and collections that will be maybe coming to Aluvatars. We can all hope so, and we will give you updates on how to acquire those Aluvatars, how all of these things will work, and how hopefully this will change the profile picture NFT game. My name is Andrew. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next one. Adios.